people like bees, something is helped by the common view of bees as hardworking and useful to us humans. Some bees are even appealingly furry. But look one in the eye and they are undeniably alien. Whatever you think about them, bees are vital to putting the food on your plate. Around one third of our crops need insects to pollinate their flowers. No pollination, no crop. And bees are overwhelmingly important in providing this service. As pollination is so crucial, finding ways to show how it works is a worthwhile challenge. The problem is that everything is so small and the action happens so quickly. Even films slowed down can be hard to make sense of. Hello, my name is Max Coleman and I work at the Royal Botanic Garden Edinburgh. I'm going to show you how you can make a model of buzz pollination out of readily available items. But first, let's remind ourselves what buzz pollination is. All pollination involves a close mutual relationship between a pollinator and a plant. Buzz pollination gets its name from certain bees buzzing at an audibly higher pitch when they visit a buzz pollinated flower. The reason for this is that the pollen is contained in bottle shaped structures called anthers and has to escape through a pore at the tip. The only way to get the pollen out is by vibration. It's rather like having to shake a sauce bottle to get anything onto your plate. The slender and less hairy honeybee cannot buzz pollinate. Bumblebees, on the other hand, are masters of buzz pollination. They vibrate their wing muscles without moving their wings and this shakes the pollen free. Only about 8% of plants need buzz pollination, but the bees that can take advantage of this resource have the benefit of less competition. Pollen is an essential protein-rich food for developing bees, and evolution has created many intricate relationships between pollinators and plants. From a human perspective, buzz pollination is important because some valuable crops require it. A lot of people would miss their blueberries, cranberries, tomatoes and eggplants. Even the potato needs buzz pollination to reproduce, although not to grow a crop of spuds. Our model represents a single anther. Remember that bottle-shaped structure that contains pollen? A real flower has several anthers arranged around the female reproductive parts, but to demonstrate buzz pollination we can make do with a single anther. First you will need a small, rigid plastic bottle with a narrow neck, just narrower than your thumb. Small plastic wine bottles are ideal. Polystyrene beanbag filling is then placed in the bottle to represent the pollen. As the filling is light and somewhat static, it does not flow out of an upturned bottle. The only missing part of the demonstration is some vibration to mimic what the bee does. The simplest way to provide this is tapping with a stick, but you can use an electric toothbrush or even an electric buzzer designed to help growers pollinate their tomato plants. Next time you see a bumblebee foraging, listen out for the change in pitch of its buzz, as this is the audible signature of buzz pollination.